What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Welcome back folks. Hopefully everyone is having an amazing Saturday. So far I am. It's beautiful out here in Southwest Florida. Hopefully everyone can experience this one day. I know many of you get some crazy cold fronts going across the country, but I don't feel that bad. I lived there, I did it, I got out. I escaped, folks, but listen, in this video, we got a lot to go over. We got an important update in the Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit. We're gonna talk about what could happen if, for some crazy reason, <clears throat> Ripple was to lose or XRP was to be deemed a security. We're gonna talk about the largest stake is of Ethereum. You're about to be blown away. And then, we're gonna go over Judge Torres, and I couldn't find the exact comment slash statement, but we're gonna review it because folks, at the end of at the end of next month, we're gonna finally have a ruling on XRP, something that we have been waiting for for the past two and a half years. So let's get in this thing. What are we seeing out there? Not too much has changed for this morning. We've seen a little bit of green on the, on the hour, hourly charts. Bitcoin's coming in at twenty one thousand eight hundred nineteen now. Ethereum one thousand five hundred twenty seven. XRP still thirty eight cents. We are seeing these top cryptos try to flip over to the green side total cryptocurrency market cap still hanging above one trillion and bitcoin diamonds is still within its range of 39 to 41 percent coming in at 40.65 now i want to remind you about this there are about 13 left 13 left remember holding one of these beautiful beautiful nfts you get 30 percent back in xrp each and every single month the first payout will be March 1st, so you still got time to jump in and grab one of these. Link is below. Now that I put this out because I still can't wrap my mind around this. They want to ban crypto staking. They want to say it's illegal. They want to say it's a security. But I can't wrap my mind around what is the difference here. You hand your money over to a bank. They promise you you're going to get 0.000005% back. But you can't give your crypto to an exchange where you are going to get anywhere between 5 to 20% back. This doesn't make sense to me. I do understand the whole point, the whole part about giving up your keys, and these, these exchanges are so new that if they do go bankrupt, that you're going to be standing in bankruptcy line trying to recover you know, a couple of pennies back. I do understand that. But what I do not understand is how come banks are able to do this, but these crypto exchanges can't. It seems like there is an agenda out there. It seems like they are trying to protect the banks. We know Gary Gensler is a big banking guy. Folks, it just doesn't make sense. It boggles my mind. Then I put this out. Happy Friday to everyone who holds more than 20,000 XRP. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Well, XRP Loon put out a pretty funny comment. He goes, you probably just wish Gary Gensler a happy Friday. The SEC government does operate at least one node on the RippleNet ledger after all. He's right. Bet you, I bet you Gary Gensler owns 20,000, at least 20,000 XRP. He was the one preaching it and teaching about it at MIT. But then it gets to the SEC and all of a sudden he acts like he has no clue what's going on. Now, Jeremy, there's a little throwback. DAI put this out. What if Ripple loses? This is from attorney Mr. Jeremy Hogan. Listen up. Because the second scenario is the tidal wave scenario and it hinges on what is currently going on in the litigation with expert discovery. The bigger concern, in my opinion, is a judgment against Ripple based on the decentralization, or lack thereof, of the XRP ledger. And the SEC hasn't really focused the court on this argument and doesn't seem to want to make it the focus of the litigation, probably because it's a losing argument for the SEC, and it doesn't really mesh with its theory of the case, but it is much more dangerous to you. The argument here is that the XRP ledger is centralized and maybe so reliant on Ripple that XRP is per se, or kind of in and of its nature, a security. Meaning that it's not just how Ripple sold it, but just because it is that it's a security. Now, you might not even think this is even arguable, but my very own Twitter friend, Stefan Huber, sorry if you mispronounced your name, found this article out of Germany just recently, which argues that exact same thing. Quote, one of the leading German business journals writes that the XRPL is centralized because all payments are controlled and checked by a group of 35 people. Oh my dear God, smile the face, smile the face. The oh my dear God part was actually Stefan's own comments. The German article actually said, ich bin ein Idiot, but not too much of an idiot because this is exactly what attorney Deaton is concerned about in his motion to intervene when he points out, quote, additionally, the SEC asserts the property held by XRP holders is a security because the very nature of XRP itself 
makes it the common thread among Ripple, its management, and all other XRP holders, close quote. In any case, there has never been a crypto case in which this has happened that I'm aware of, and I believe I've reviewed every SEC crypto case out there. So this would be uncharted waters, but the effect of any order, which even alludes to XRP being inherently a security or carrying with it some kind of security designation, would be absolutely devastating. An opinion like that would have an almost instantaneous chilling effect on the markets, freezing liquidity, and leaving XRP holders with bags. Not bags of cash, but bags like luggage that sit in your closet, unusable. I don't like bags. I don't want to just be holding my bags. Folks, this outcome, I firmly do believe 99.99% that is not going to happen. We know the extra P ledger, not centralized. We know that the SEC from Stuart Alderati just picked up and created their own node on the ledger. Why? Because they could, because no one is over viewing and who can do what? Build on it. It's openless, it's permissionless, do what you want. And the SEC is exactly doing that. But this all ties into something pretty funny. Because, and I couldn't find the exact tweet, and it was out there, but Judge Torres has never missed a deadline. What does that mean? She wasn't on a blacklist. She always finishes her deadlines in time. When is her deadline? March 31st, to get this case figured out, to come up with a ruling on this case, right? Do you think that she, in one of her probably biggest cases in her career, is going to miss a deadline? I don't think so folks and we just put this out the largest stake of ethereum is lido with 31 percent of all staked ether lido is backed by guess who anderson horowitz paragon dragonfly capital which is a consensus investor isn't that interesting because look at this threat let me blow this up for those of you looking at the screen. Crack can reach a settlement with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission regarding its on-chain staking program. Kraken has agreed to end its on-chain staking service for U.S. clients only, starting today with the exception of staked Ethereum. Assets enrolled in our on-chain staking program by U.S. clients will automatically be unstaked and will no longer earn rewards. Isn't that interesting? They're letting Ethereum people still stake within the U.S. on Kraken, but no one else is allowed to. You think that plays into who is backing this? I sure do. Jen John Dean put this out. Always is good discussion between Raul Paul and Michael Saylor. To Saylor, I must add, however, anyone who truly understands security laws knows the investment contracts, AK security, is not the underlying asset or token. You must distinguish secondary sales independent of the promoter. 100%. Folks, the XRP, me and you and buying, me and you are buying, it's not a security. It is not a freaking security. A lot of people I have spoken to didn't even know who Ripple was before buying XRP. A lot of people bought XRP because they thought they heard, and this was the hell everything went down back in 2017. You heard a crypto, you heard a rumor about a crypto being listed or about to be listed on Coinbase. We called it the Coinbase to pump back then. Okay, what happened? Simple. People heard ABC coin is going to get listed on Coinbase. People started buying and pumped. That's what happened. XRP, there was a rumor. It got the Coinbase effect. It went through the freaking roof. People didn't know about Ripple. They didn't know what Ripple was doing. They didn't know anything. They just heard a rumor and they bought XRP. Those are not securities. It is that freaking simple. John Dean and put this out. And I, I covered this. And I want to chime in on this again. Gary Gensler just wants to weigh in and throw his weight around and think he's some big shot. Right? The Kraken... The owner of Kraken put this out, and I should have pulled it up for you, and I didn't. He's like, oh, was it that simple? All I had to do was, was fill out a form and pay the SEC $30 million, and we could have continued on as usual? I mean, it's a joke what he's doing. And as I told you, this is going to get worse. He is going to start attacking these exchanges that are just going to roll over and do whatever he wants. Let's listen to the second half of this. So those other platforms should right. take note of this and seek to come into compliance, do the proper disclosures and registration and the like. Okay, so, but here's one of the big issues, as I think you know, which is this staking service is gonna no longer be available to customers in the US. But interestingly, they're gonna still offer the same product internationally, abroad, outside of the United States. And so it raises this larger policy question as to whether crypto a, these types of products just move offshore. Maybe that's what you want and that's a good thing. But then whether what you do about... Why is it a good thing if they move offshore? Let's just keep stifling innovation within the U.S., folks. That's what they were doing. Let's just keep doing that. Let's push everything out of the United States. 
the American citizenry who's then using VPNs and all sorts of other things to, to skirt around what's happening here. Look, we're technology neutral at the SEC, but we're clearly very focused on investor protection. 330 million Americans are our clients. These firms, Kraken, knew how to register. Others know how to register. It's just a form on our website. They can come in, talk to our talented people and disclosure review teams. And if they want to offer staking, we're neutral. Come in, register, because investors need that disclosure. What do you Listen, he's full of shit. We all know that. Come in and register. Everyone that has ever gone into that office from 2013 all the way up until 2018, they didn't get any answers. Ripple was meeting with them weekly. They got with them every month. They said, sat down. They never told them anything about XRP. They even said in 2018, XRP was not a security. And then they dropped the lawsuit two years later when XRP became even more decentralized. They are a bunch of liars and they are crooks and they are targeting the weak folks. We need to all stand up as a community. We all need to fight the good fight, and these exchanges need to start to have a backbone. Ripple, I'm happy what Ripple is doing because XRP is going to be two and a half years up in front of all these other cryptocurrencies out there because you know what? If you get a lawsuit against your crypto right now, you know it's going to be at least two to three years if you want to fight that fight to make sure it's not a security. And if your crypto is a security, you are freaking screwed, folks. Wash your damn hands. Be nice. Be kind to of each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.